Hello everybody, my name is Emma with Emma Reads. Welcome to my channel. Today I am finally talking about A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. I am going to be including spoilers in this review. I figured that was safe to do since it is so well read, but just fair warning, spoilers ahead. Honestly, I feel like the only person that hasn't read this book at this point, but I'm really excited to share my thoughts, so let's get into it. I will say too that I really went into this series as blind as humanly possible while still being a person that exists on the internet. So while I knew like maybe a couple of names, I really knew nothing about how the storylines played out and I really don't know anything about future books except that maybe a couple of characters continue to appear. So I don't necessarily know all of the dynamics of those yet. All right, so jumping into the first section of the book, we get to see Feyre hunting in the woods and learn about her family and how that whole family dynamic plays out. We get to see that Feyre is the caretaker of the family, that her mother has died. We see that her father is physically disabled as well as sort of mentally detached from everything that's happening. And her two sisters both have different personalities, but neither of them really provide for the household in the way that Feyre does. And like, I'll be honest, when we had this whole beginning section happening where Pharaoh was in the woods, she was desperate, she was hungry, it gave me real like Hunger Games vibes. It's like, oh, so it's like the, the sister that's protective over the rest of the family. She's the only one really keeping everything afloat. And so I was worried at first that Pharaoh was going to come out to be more of a two-dimensional character. But I think that it doesn't stay that way for long. There is an interesting scene at the market where after Pharaoh skins the wolf and everything and she's trying to sell their hides at the market, there was this whole group of what they call like children of the blessed or something who were obsessed with fairies and honestly I know that the children of the blessed had like a weird dynamic and they kind of gave me the heebie-jeebies but at the same time it was like good heebie-jeebies like I kind of want to see more of that in the next few books like it would be interesting if they continued to cause trouble in the human world I think so I actually kind of like that little tidbit it kind of felt like like medieval or early modern Europe where you would have some of these things happening like at the market so found that interesting. Honestly, I feel like all of that time that she spends at home doesn't actually last that long. And so uh, we move pretty quickly into her time with the fairies. So then moving on into her time with Tamlin and Lucian in the spring court. One of my absolute favorite things about this book was the way it described scenery and the beautiful writing involved. So the way that it described the lands of the spring court as well as the different rooms and everything, I really felt like I was there and it was really immersive and awesome. I also thought that the three characters, Feyre, Lucian, and Tamlin had an interesting dynamic because like most oftentimes with a romance, if one character is really grumpy, the other one is more like Sunshine. But with Farrah and Tamlin, we kind of get like a grumpy, grumpy romance. And then Lucian is off to the side, like basically like telling everyone to calm down, which is kind of funny. But <laughs> Lucian provided a really awesome amount of comedic relief, which was nice because Tamlin and Farrah were both so serious so much of the time. And again, I was worried about Farrah being like a two-dimensional character, but then the more time that she spent at the spring court and the more that we got to see inside of her mind, the more dynamic she became. What really made this section of the book stand out for me was the fact that we were really experiencing everything along Along with Feyre. I feel like so many books, instead of letting things unfold naturally or in a way where we feel like we're actually experiencing things, they just kind of tell you what happened and they don't let you actually see how everything plays out in the moment. And so with Feyre and being inside of her mind, I feel like we were learning about this entire universe with her. And so it was a powerful and on the ground way of getting to know Prithian and getting to know the different elements of the story. So that was honestly one of my favorite aspects of this entire section where Farah is getting used to being in the spring court and among the fairies in general. So in terms of the romance in this part of the book, honestly the first couple of scenes where Farah really starts to warm up to Tamlin like it made me smile. I really liked seeing Farah finally if something good happened to her for once in her life. And the way that it was more of like a slow burn throughout that entire section was just chef's kiss. It was really nice seeing all of the tension build. Where it got a little funny for me though was the night of the party. <laughs> So I felt like I was kind of like cruising along and getting used to the spring court and everything with Farah, and then the party hits where like Tamlin has to like choose a mate that night for the crops to grow in the spring, which is like 
interesting logic. I don't think that the intended reaction was for me to laugh when he found her later in the hallway, but the way that he was like so serious and there was so much pent up energy, I was like, <clears throat> okay, okay. Moving on. <laughs> So to kind of recap the whole section where Farah is living in the spring court and getting to know Tamlin and Lucian and the whole fairy world in general, some highlights for me were Lucian's character. I thought he was great comedic relief and an interesting backstory and I really 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 hope that we get to see more of him in the future. The whole storyline about how we had had a lover of his murdered by his family was really intense and really intriguing. So diving into that deeper in a future book I think would make for a really compelling storyline. I loved seeing Fair's character develop further in this section. I feel like it's where she really came alive and really became her own person and a unique character for me. And the way that we're experiencing all of Prithian through her eyes is very powerful. Tamlin I liked and I love to root for the good guy, right? He did feel a bit one-sided to me. So I can see, based on things that I've heard about Reese and what I read of Reese in the last part of the book, I can see why some people maybe prefer his character to Tamlin's. Does that mean that I dislike Tamlin and Farrah's relationship? Not at all. I think that they do work together, but I think that there's even a little bit more complexity to Farrah than there is Tamlin maybe in some of these scenes in terms of motive and things like that. And then we get into the third section. <laughs> and it gets real. It really gets real. <laughs> I knew that there would be some sort of tense climax in this book just with the way that they build up the blight so much and the way that they keep fearfully referring to whoever she is, who we later learn is Aramantha. I think it's Aramantha, Agamantha, one of the two. So I knew that there would be something crazy happening at the end of this book, right? I expected that. But I wasn't expecting all of this, okay? So honestly, until I got to the third part of the book, this was pretty easily five stars for me. I was so swept in it. I was right there with Tamlin and Farah. I was loving getting to know this whole world that Sarah J Mass created. And I loved every second of it, truly. The last part where she goes under the mountain and starts doing the trials felt a little weird to me. Like it kind of felt like it was a different book entirely. The challenges did make sense, right? Like the first one is a physical challenge, the second one is more of a mind challenge, and then the third one is like an emotional challenge. I was shocked that murder was involved in one of the challenges, like literally just straight cold-blooded murder. When that happened I was like, oh my. <laughs> and I think that was part of the reason why this third section just didn't quite settle as well with me. It was so much more violent than the rest of the book and so it was a bit hard for me to get through. Like compared to the first you know 200 and some pages of the book it felt so much darker, so much more violent. The way that she is imprisoned down like basically in a dungeon for this entire section was really dark and grim and so it kind of took me away a little bit from the story and I had trouble connecting to the characters so much. So that was a bit of a downer for me. That being said, like when Alice was explaining the rules of the curse that Tamlin was under, it sounded like Tamlin had completely faked his love for Feyre to break the curse. And when I tell you that my heart was broken, I was like, the audacity! Like, what? You really made it so that Tamlin completely didn't love Fair in the first place? And obviously, like, I was wrong. But for a second there, oh man. Getting to know Reese's character better was a really interesting experience. I can't necessarily say that I'm 100% Team Reese, but part of me feels like he treats Feyre as more of an intellectual equal as opposed to Tamlin and Lucian. I feel like whenever Tamlin and Lucian talked to her, they were kind of talking down to her and filling in on her complete lack of knowledge of their entire world. And then the way that Reese talked to her, he made her seem like she was actually capable 
of things herself, as opposed to just having to be saved constantly by the fairies. So for that reason, I really dug Reese's character. The last section of the book really became the most compelling for me when everyone started clearly turning against Aramantha, because when Feyre first gets to the mountain, it seems like absolutely everybody is brainwashed, but it added so much dynamic when people actually started turning against Aramantha. And this is where Reese got really interesting too because we kind of get a hint earlier on that he's like sort of wrapped around Aramantha's finger, right? There are some crude jokes made about him, but then we see how much more complex things are below the surface and his purpose for being there and his purpose for being so close to her. Even though the idea of having to go live in the night court for a week every month sounds terrifying and awful, <laughs> I am really excited to kind of see how his character develops further and how these motives start to come out. So. You got me hooked, Sarah J Maas. What can I say? Like I said, the first part of the book was definitely five stars for me. I had a bit more trouble connecting to the last like 100 pages or so. So for those reasons, I think I ended up giving it a four star overall, but I definitely loved it. I'll definitely be continuing the series. Let me know whether you are team Tamlin or Reese in the comments. And also let me know if you would like for me to do a dedicated review of Court of Mist and Fury. I picked it up recently and I'm really excited to get reading. So let me know if you would also like my thoughts on that one and I will see you next time.